In this video, I'll show you how I make a custom headband that can be used on its own or to support another hat. In this example, I've made a very simple headband with a comb that faces to the front to catch it from falling forward. You'll see that the base of the band goes behind the ears and the top of the headband uh, rests on the head with a forward facing comb and this comb helps prevent the headband from falling forward on the face. Now in this uh, video I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to do the headband itself. I'm not going to do the veiling or the bow. Some basic supplies you're going to need are some wire cutters, needle nose pliers, thread snips, uh, a coarse grit, in this case 80 grit sandpaper. You're going to need a lighter. You're going to need some sewing scissors, some heavy duty thread. Um, it doesn't matter uh, what brand, just as long as the color matches. A thimble for sewing. Millinery needles, I'll be using the size nines. And you're also going to need some matching, or uh, in this case, uh, for the example, I'm using contrast sewing thread so you can see the stitches I'm using. You're also going to need a measuring tape, a small metal comb with at least seven teeth on it, and you're going to need 16 gauge galvanized steel wire. Um, alternately, you can also use 14 gauge millinery wire, but this is a cost effective alternative. And the secret to this technique is 275 paracord. You cannot use 550 paracord, it's just too big for the project. It has to be 275. And I get mine from Paracord Planet and it comes in a billion different colors. You're also going to need a basic head size shape. Uh, it doesn't have to be this kind exactly, but just something that has a smooth curved edge that you can build the headband off of. And for my example, I'll be using a, a cosmetology mannequin as my client. So what I'm doing here is just measuring around exactly how long I need the headband to be. And my normal measurement for this is 14 inches. So I'm just going to sort of uh, eyeball where that goes at the base of the, at the, of the ear and all the way to the other side. And so my, like I said, my standard measurement is about 14 inches, but feel free to use any size you want. Measure out the length of wire that you're going to need. Uh, in this case, you're going to need to measure 14 inches, and then we're going to double that. So the measurement is going to actually be 28 inches. And to that 28 inches, we need to add a few more inches. So um, you can see here in the, in the video that I'm going to be stopping at 28, and then I'm going to add a few more inches. Now, I like to add at least three or four more inches to this, so I end up going all the way to 32. And this is just a buffer zone, and once you start to shape the wire, you'll see what happens with it and how it can kind of grow and shrink on you a little bit. For the paracord, you're just going to measure out the same distance as the wire. So in this case, 32, plus you're going to need to add at least 8 to 10 inches. The paracord shrinks and expands as it goes along. So I'm adding an extra 10 inches on this because you'll see in the end we might actually need it. Now paracord has a uh, core inside of it. In this case, it's a five-strand cord. I'm just tapping the end to expose the cord, and you're going to pull out the cord. We're going to gut the paracord, and this will create a hollow tube of cording that we can then put the wire through, and this is sort of the magic of this technique. Using the front of your uh, head size shape, in this case this block, you're going to place approximately the center of the wire over the top of the block. And what you want to do is you just want to shape the wire down over the block. And you're going to see that I'm going to be pulling it in a little bit on the bottom and sort of just pulling tension across that arc. And you can see that it's already starting to form the headband shape. Continue shaping the headband over the block. Now, the next step, you're going to need to measure this. So you want to put the center of your measurement. In this case, the measurement is 14, so the center is going to be uh, approximately at 7 uh, at the top 
of your head size shape. And then you're going to mark the ends, one at zero and one at 14, with a Sharpie marker or something, uh, just to make sure that you can know where those two ends stop and you'll have the correct measurement for your headband. Now, gently bend the wire against your thumb. You do not want a sharp bend here. You want a loose bend, just like that. And you're going to repeat on both sides. Uh, make sure that you have the wires bending in the same direction. In this case, they're both facing forward. Continue to pull in on the ends a little bit and find that tension across that arc just to make the headband a little more arched and to get into that familiar headband shape. This will fit against the head better. On one end of the wire, you're going to flatten it by running it against the sandpaper. It's important that you keep the end of the wire flush against the sandpaper. You don't want this at a point, otherwise it'll snag the cord. So you want the dull, flat end of the wire. It's perfectly flat, and the sandpaper works great on this wire. Now, gently insert the wire into the gutted cord. And it just takes a little bit of coaxing, but once you get it on there, it just goes on very smoothly. And it works a bit like a, kind of a stretch and pull thing. Once you push it on there, you can smooth it out, and it stretches out a little bit. And you'll see that it fits inside the cording perfectly. Continue pushing the paracord onto the wire gently and easily. It does honestly doesn't take that long. Um, you just need to push it on and make sure that you're pushed and smooth and pushed and smooth as you move along the shape. When you get to the ends that are bent, don't worry about it. Just continue to push and smooth and push and smooth. Because the bend is not so sharp, it'll easily curve around. Eventually, you'll have the entire headband covered. And you should have some paracord hanging off of both ends. And you can see how much more we needed to cover the length of the band. So leaving approximately one eighth of an inch, what you want to do is you want to cut the paracord and um, trim it off to where it's nice and flush. And you see you have just like an eighth of an inch past the wire. Now you're going to use your lighter, be careful, and melt it. Paracord is nylon, so it melts really easily. Once you've melted it, you're going to tap it against the side of the lighter and then press it together. It doesn't really burn or anything like that. It's not even mildly warm. And what this does is it seals the end so the wire can't poke through. You only need to do this on one end for now. Now I'm using my fingers just to press and uh, shape the headband a little more. I'm using my thumb as pressure against the curve to match the uh, end piece that's not connected uh, to, make, to make sure it matches the curve of the existing headband. And I'm pushing and pulling just to get the right tension. When you have the wire in your hand, the tension will make sense and you'll be able to feel what the wire is doing better than I can, than I can explain it to you. Just keep uh, fussing with it and keep uh, shaping it with your fingers and your hands, trying to get the shape that you want. And basically what you're doing is just keeping that arc nice and smooth all the way around. And we're going to finish the ends in just a second. So now that we have the ends as close as we can get them with our hands, we're going to take our needle nose pliers, or any pliers really, and we're going to carefully close that loop. And what this does is it just makes sure those two ends stay together at the bottom. And then once you have that closed, I take the pliers and I bend it out ever so slightly at a small angle. And what this does is it ensures that that end doesn't dig into the base of the skull as the band is being worn. Now that you have everything shaped out where it needs to be, what you need to do is line up the three ends together. And you can see I have one that's closer to the center than the other one, and that's the one that I had um, melted the end. But I have too much wire hanging off of the other end. So you only need about a one and a half to two inch overlap for all three layers. And all I've done here is just 
clip off the excess wire, and then I pull back the cord, and I clip off another sixteenth of an inch of wire. Then I push the cord over, and again, I'm going to have that little bitty, uh, like a scant one-eighth of an inch over on the wire, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to melt it, tap it against the lighter, and then squeeze it together to make sure that the wire cannot poke through the cord. And that will seal off the ends of the wire. You want to layer the three wires together. You want them in a row. And uh, what I do is I put a little piece of masking tape just to hold them in place for the next step. Now, as I am taping it to hold it together temporarily, I'm still making sure that I have all of my shapes correct. Like the two wires are parallel to one another, one isn't longer than the other, and you want to make sure that everything is nice and smooth and arced across. Now, thread your needle. Uh, if you're using regular sewing thread, you can just double the thread, which is what I've done here in white, so you can see my stitches. Uh, not the end, and you're going to secure it to the short end of the wire. Now, just like I've done here. Go past the knot about a sixteenth of an inch, and then you're going to run the needle through all three layers of paracord and wire. And what you're going to do is just continue doing this all the way up the distance of the overlapped wires. So it's a little stitch up, it just rides to the outside. You're going to go through, then you're going to go a stitch past, and through and continue like this. So it's basically like you're doing a ladder stitch, but the ladder stitch is connecting all three layers. Every three or four in, uh, three or four stitches, what you want to do is you want to pull the thread taut to make sure that you're connecting all three of those layers of wire and cord together into one solid piece. As you're doing this, make sure no nothing else is shifting. Make sure that your two uh, wires are parallel as they shape down to the base and make sure nothing is moving around. Okay. When you've completed it and you get to the end, you're just going to do a little knot, uh, or a couple of knots if you want, uh, where you loop, the, um, you loop the thread together and then just form a knot. And then you're going to bury the thread into the paracord. Now, if you're using matching thread, you will never see these stitches. You're then going to trim the thread flush against the band. Now, you can see here that the band is pretty much done. And you can actually just stop here if you wanted to for whatever reason, but it fits against the head shape, and I can still shape it a little bit more if I need to, but it fits perfectly to my client. The combs I use are pretty inexpensive. They're metal, and I buy them in bulk on eBay. Uh, you can see that they have arcing combs that rest on top of the head. The best part about them is that you can shape them ever so slightly. This will help us better fit them to the center of the underside of the headband. As you can see, it'll fit exactly into that arc, and we don't have to worry about fighting it while we're sewing it on. You can use a little bit of masking tape to hold the comb against the headband temporarily. Using heavy-duty thread, I cut off about two yards of thread, and I double it. You want to put the loop through the one of the teeth on the end, and then you're going to form a hitch knot, taking the two loose ends and pulling it through the loop. And this is going to catch holding the comb against the headband, just like that. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to start wrapping through the teeth. On the top, you're going to get parallel lines. On the bottom, you're going to get a zigzag. And you can reverse this and do it the other way, but I prefer this one just because, I don't know, it's maybe traditional for me. You're going to pass around the headband at least twice, often three times. It's up to you. I just try to keep it as consistent as possible. And then once you've wrapped through the teeth a couple or three times, just move on to the next tooth. And what you're doing is just trying to make sure you keep going in between. 
you also want to pull the thread as tight as you can because this is the only thing that's going to be holding that comb against the headband so you want it pretty tight and as you get to the tape just take it off and continue wrapping now i'm using contrast thread so you can see what i'm doing but you really need to use a thread that matches the color of your headband um, the paracord in this case is matching a hair color and paracord comes in a billion different colors so I mean you can pick whatever color you want but I like to match the hair color more than match the hat design so but it's completely up to you as you wrap make sure that you keep everything as neat as possible uh, I went back and redid that one because the gap wasn't um, it wasn't as neat as I wanted it so just readjust everything to get everything nice and neat and you want these lines as parallel as possible but again in a matching thread color to the paracord you'll never see them well you'll see them a little bit on the comb but you won't really see them on the top and this is what it looks like underneath make sure that your threads are really close together and make sure it just looks neat on the inside to finish off the wrapping take the loose ends of the wrapping thread and make a couple of knots uh, where you came where, where you ended and then you're going to just bury the thread through the paracord and cut it flush with the thread snips. At this point, make any adjustments to the thread to make sure they're nice, neat, and even. And that completes the basic headband. And as you can see, it fits exactly the way it's supposed to. It sits on the head with the comb facing forward so it doesn't fall off onto your face. And now it's ready for anything you want to put on there. You can sew a hat to it. You can sew a veiling like I did. Or for a costume, you can even glue things to it. The paracord's pretty resilient and can take hot glue. This technique also works for individual components. You can shape any kind of prong or um, brace against the head that you need and then just sew them or even wrap them on to an existing headband. And you can see here if you needed a comb to the front and then a prong that would rest against the back of the head, you could do that. You can also use this technique as a trim in and of itself. Now I'm just having using the brown uh, paracord here, but you could do these in like funky colors and stuff and then just sew these to existing headbands and then you could have all kinds of crazy wires shooting off of the head. For this little boater hat, what I did was I left the headband wide open. I didn't compress it all that much. And then I just tied the loose ends instead of sewing them together. And then I just tacked it strategically where I wanted the hat to rest on the head against the headband. Now, for the example I showed in the beginning, you can see that this is just a basic headband with a comb. And all I did was gather some veiling to the uh, to the top of the headband and I made the headband first and then added the veiling on later and then I just stitched the stacked bow to the top just to give it a little bit of a 50s flare but you can see that you can just sew directly onto the paracord wherever you need to in this case just to tack the veiling to the side so I can keep it in the place that I wanted to and that's it that's how I make a basic headband if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below, and uh, stay tuned for more videos on millinery techniques coming soon. Thanks for watching.